good evening i don't know if you can hear me uh, evening evening can you hear me yeah good evening my name is diego peñarrera i am going to present today uh, this video conference called how to write your emails okay so i'm presenting introduce myself again last week i did it but just in case i'm a teacher of english i have approximate i've been teaching english for around uh, 11 years and I really enjoyed this kind of event, so I'm going to start with another video conference which is uh, related to business English, which is a topic uh, well that is now now very required for people. So we're starting now. Okay. Right. Uh, here, uh, the first topic. Uh, please tell me if you can hear me. It's okay, right? Can you hear me well? Yeah. I hope you can. Uh, okay, I am starting now uh, this presentation. I'm going to show you some steps which are key, pure key points when writing emails. Uh, sometimes we believe it might be easy or it might be difficult. Well, it's not either of them. It's something that we need to take our time when we are working with this. Okay. It is very important to be very meticulous, to be very, very, uh, you know, to take a lot of, uh, to take a lot of uh, time, of, of, you know, preparation for, to do it, a lot of uh, concentration, because sometimes we can skip things or we can do things wrong or, or write things incorrectly or write a, a name or a last name not the way it is or small things like that okay this is something that we need to take into account when we're when we are uh, typing our emails there are also some tools that help us uh, that help us uh, improve this and i will show you this during the process of this of this uh, video conference video web this webinar okay so, mm -hmm. thank you janela Okay, thank you for for your answer. I, I needed I needed to see if if everything was okay, right? So let's start uh, with the first step that we. Mm -hmm. Hi, Luis. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are starting to show you a little bit of this. Uh, okay, everybody's ready now. So you let tell, let me know when you're ready so I can start. Okay, it's it's okay. I, take your time. Get comfortable. Tell me if it's okay or you want to wait a little bit and we're starting. There's no problem here. All depends on you. I'm here to support you. So whenever you're ready, we're starting. Okay? Maybe I started too early. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is English. Punctuality is sometimes trying to start early. Yeah. Okay, we're missing one minute, and at ten exactly at ten o'clock exactly we're starting. So we we are all set, all right? Just in case, uh, if you feel I am talking too fast or I said things that were not clear, feel free to uh, thank you. Feel free to. Feel free to say go again or repeat or use other words. Okay, I will try to adapt the language depending on your needs. Okay. Oh, this is, there's a lot of people today. Great. Okay, you ready? Whenever you're ready, we're starting. Okay, it's 12. It's 10 o'clock, so it's time to start. Okay. Let's go with our first step. So today our, our lesson, as, as I said before, it's how to write email, how to write professional email specifically. This In this session, we're going to focus on how to write professional emails, which is the key aspect when people, for people who work, for business people, correct? So here we go. Uh, the first slide I'm using here is subject line says a lot. So what do we mean by the, by the subject line? Whenever you 
start to send an email, you have to put a subject. So what is the purpose of your email? What is the reason for your email, right? This is the very first part that we should consider when sending an email. So the subject that we are going to introduce, OK? It has to be, what do you think? It has to be clear. It has to state what we want to do. It has to tell our purpose. So it's very, very important as, the, as it is the first step. So they pay attention to it. Imagine if you write something which is not exactly, which doesn't seem important to the person who's reading it, they're just going to skip it. They're not going to read it. They're not going to read it, OK? So this is our first step, OK? The subject line. So we are starting with this, the subject line. What do we have here? I have some concepts here that I would like to read you so you can have your can become a little more familiar. No doubt a subject line is the first thing a, recip a recipient reads. Okay? As I was telling you before, the first thing a recipient reads. The decision or whether or not to open an email depends highly on how the subject line looks. Okay? I was telling you a little bit of this before, but I'm telling this is what experts say. The decision of whether or not to open an email depends highly on how the subject line looks. All right? How, if you want your email to be read, your subject line is the key here. Okay? This is the key. So let's continue. Make sure the subject line is here are the recommendations for people when you're writing your email. Okay? Simple, specific, but catchy. What do you mean? What do we mean by catchy? That it has to call the attention of the person who is going to read it. It has to catch their eyes. It has to, you know, it has to be like call the attention of the person that is going to read. Okay? The type of direction that email is directed to has to be has to possess this subject line with a lot of you know attention that causes attention that you know it's going to be like, oh my god, I have to read this. Okay? So for this, in order to achieve this, in order to obtain this, you have to use keywords okay you have to use keywords what do we mean by keywords important words these words are the ones that are going to catch their attention and these keywords briefly summarize the content of your message so you have to find the appropriate words that can be used to describe your message in the first line I mean in the subject line okay this is the purpose of this first of this first line the subject line you have to write the summary in in very few words of what you are going to represent what you want to say in your email okay this is the first part that we need to have into consideration so for now now you know the, the subject line is key for your success when sending an email. We're just starting. Now let's go what is next. The second step that we need to consider is greet the person you are writing to. What do we mean by greet the person you are writing to? Remember that this is a formal email. So you cannot say hi, you cannot say hello, you cannot say hey, what's up? How are you doing? Or those things. This is not a chat. This is an email. This is a formal email. So there are some considerations that we need to have into account when doing this. Okay? So what considerations do you think we need to possess here? Let's see now. We're going to see them here. Here we have some examples that we can use. When we know the name of the person, 
you can say if you notice most of the time we just say dear 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 we have some options you can say for example I have the example dear chat which is name and I use a comma I put I put it in red so it can be it can be clear here it's a comma or you can say dear mr. Oswald here's when you want to be a little more formal and you can put a column we call this column okay or if you want to be a little more formal you can say dear mrs uh, and the complete name okay and also you use column when you don't know who the person is or what's the name or what do you call or how to call them you can write this expression to whom it may concern okay whenever you don't know who you are writing an email to you have to keep in keep in mind that you can use this expression which is the most formal and appropriate in such cases okay yeah okay this is the first part you can say dear 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 which is the most appropriate or you can use to whom it may concern when we are talking about uh, people you don't know exactly or you don't know who you're referring to okay something important some other details important details that we need to keep into account when using this if you are not sure whether a woman you're writing to is miss, miss or missus, then miss is usually the safer option. Okay? The safest option. Okay? Uh, I will repeat this. If you're not sure whether a woman you're writing to is miss or missus, then miss is usually the safer option. So don't take a risk. And they can take it wrong. They can uh, they can believe it's there's something uh, that is not appropriate. So you better use miss. Okay. Another solid gender neutral approach is to simply put the recipient's full name. For example, dear Alex Lee. So you don't put Mr., you don't put Miss, you don't put Mrs., and you skip that uh, that uh, you know that dilemma whether you don't know if it's a if it's married, if single, what to put, what to include. So you better just put dear and the full name. That is going to help. That is going to be very helpful for you. Okay. Now, by contrast, the generic dear sir or madam seems impersonal and should be avoided. That's why that's why it is better to say to whom it may concern. Okay? So let's try to avoid uh so oh, so sorry. So it's important to to um, sorry, uh, to not to include not to include impersonal sir or madam, it's better to use uh, to include uh, the name or just to whom it may concern as I was saying sorry but uh, there was some sort of interruption here okay now let's continue I hope everything is fine so far now this is in case you are responding to a recent message or a previous message okay this is uh, in case you received a message from the person and now you are responding or you previously talked to the other to this person by email or you, you had a communication and now you want to respond 
whenever you want to respond, when you, are you uh, taking into consideration this? Are you thanking the recipient, or are you responding to a recent to a recent message from them? Okay. In case this is the situation, in case this is happening to you, in case this is happening to you, please take into account these ideas. I repeat, okay? I repeat. I, I go back. I go back. If this person talked to you previously or wrote you previously and you are thanking, giving thanks, saying thank you, or you responding to a recent message, this is what you have to do. Okay, I want to make this clear. Okay, I want this to be clear. We are going to use this kind of response if the person wrote us previously. Okay? I want this to make to, to be completely clear. If the person wrote us previously, we can to do, we can we have to do this. If you have something to express gratitude for, you want to do so at the beginning. Uh-huh. At the very beginning. Once you say dear sir or madam to you know dear, dear and the name to whom it may concern. Well, when you already know the name, you don't need to put to whom it may concern. You know, dear madam, dear dear Carlos, dear Sofia, etc. If you want to say thank you for something, you have to do it at the very beginning of your email. Okay? Be clear on that. You think at the very beginning. Why? Because what is next is the reason for your email. Okay? So, reading this one more time. If you have to say something, if you have something to express gratitude for, you want to do so at the beginning. So, it doesn't feel like an afterthought. What do we mean by this? So it is not like you remember, oh, 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 I forgot to thank you, okay? So if you have to respond, if you have to get, say thanks for something, you do it uh, at the very beginning of your email. After the salutation, you say thank you for whatever, a, for whatever that person did for you, okay? Similarly, if you are in the midst or in the middle of a back and forth conversation, you want to stay on track and not change the subject. So what do we mean by this? If you do this at the beginning, you can continue with the conversation without any problem. Okay? Imagine that you are having a conversation and you remember, oh, I didn't thank this person for what they did for me. Oh, oh, oh sorry, I forgot to thank you for... This is not helpful at all. Okay? So the idea is that if you want to think or you want to say something uh, to this person, do it at the very beginning of your email, and then you continue with the topic you were working on. Okay? I hope this is this part is clear. And then let's move on to the next one. Some examples that we could use here for, uh, when thanking a person is thank you for your kind contribution to Red Panda Conservation International. You can start with thank you. You can also say thanks for your interest. My client would be more than happy to chat at the time you suggested. Okay, this is the introductory line. Or you can say the replacement parts you requested for your DeLorean are scheduled for delivery this week. So you open up with these things, with dependent issues. So you tell this person about what you were discussing before. Okay? This is... This is important. This is key when you are starting. So we have the structure now again. The subject line, the salutation, and the thank you part. These are, these are the three steps we're working so far now, right? Now, let's continue. I hope everything is fine so, so far. Let's continue. Explain what you're writing about. So once we already covered the first three steps, 
and we already finished the previous issue, the previous activity, it's time for us to explain the reason of our email. Yeah? So, this is important. We have to explain the reason for the email. What you're writing about. What is the purpose of your email? Here they plan, they plan to tell you two questions. You need to answer plainly, okay? Two questions that you need to be careful about. What are you hoping to make happen? What is your purpose, in other words? That's what I included. What are you hoping to make happen? And, and how can the person you're writing, how can the person you're writing help? How can this person help you? Okay. Okay. This is the important thing. So now I'm going to show you. Uh, let's. We have to keep this in mind. How can the person you're writing help you? How can this person be helpful for you? And what is the purpose of this? Uh, of this. Okay. Let's see. Here we have some examples that we could use. For example, here it says, I'm writing to inquire about your research on how cats roam their coats. Okay, this is one one of the purposes, one, purp one, one purpose wing here. I'm a local radio producer looking to schedule a live interview ahead of your performance in Oakland next week. You're trying to ask for help. My architectural firm is in need of expertise on three houses and several colleagues tell me your insight is unrivaled. Again, this person is trying to ask for help and, and is also expressing the purpose. Okay? So, whenever you express the purpose of your email, you have to say, I'm writing the reason and also you have to tell the person that, this per that, that he or she is going to be of great help for you. Mm -hmm. This is another important part that we need to take into account. The purpose and if the person is going to help us, how this person is going to help us. So we need to be very clear on what their purpose is. Yeah. Now another another tip that, that we're given by experts. In stating your purpose, you want to be direct. However, take this into account, but not to the point of seeming brusque or rude. Okay? So, what do we mean with this? Uh, English, in English, it's necessary to be direct, to be, to stick to the point, to be straight to what we need, to go straight to what we need. And if we don't do it, it's kind of, it's, it can be messy for the person who receives the email. So, however, we need to be cons we need to keep in consideration that we cannot be rusk or rude. So, if this feels like an awkward balancing act, err on the side of formality. So, it is preferable to be too formal and and to be than to be rude okay it is preferable to be formal to be extremely formal and to be than to be than being rude yeah just it's better to be slightly overdressed at work and too casual it's usually better for you for your first email to a new contact to be exceptionally polite this is what we're trying to say here okay maybe it's better for you to be extremely formal than be too rude. So let's not take risks on this. Okay? It's, you know, in order not to make not to take risks. Try to be as formal as possible. The more formal the better, at least in this case. Yeah. Now another step that we need to into account that we need to remember is to keep it short. <laughs> let's try to keep it short. Sometimes we want to tell so many details or so many things in an email, but this is not required. This is not necessary. 
Yeah, we need to keep this into account. We need to keep this in mind. All right, keep it short. What do we mean by this? Be respectful of your readers' time because if you feel they feel your message is unduly long, they'll likely start to skim. So if they feel that your message is too long to read, they will just try to read it in a very fast way and they may skip some pretty important details that you're including or some important information you intended to send and it wasn't read. So, as, I, as it says before, think about this person's time and make it short so they can read it fast, but they got the effect you really want to, to, you want to, to send. Okay, or you want to cause. Now, this is important, uh, and we need to make to 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 keep this into account to to have to have this clear. If a weighty subject requires lengthy discussion, look for better ways to communicate about in that it, about it than email. What do we mean by this? The email is not going to be the appropriate tool to talk about a very complex topic. Uh -huh, okay? The email is not the appropriate tool to do it. You have to use your message as a way to set up a meeting or discussion rather than a venue or a dense treatise on the subject. It means by the email you only plan a meeting, plan a discussion, but don't start one using the email. Okay? Remember, you have to keep it short, and if you want to have further discussion, further details, a, convert, a bigger conversation, you have to, you have to set up a meeting, and in that way, that way, it will be appropriate. An email is not the best way. Okay? Now, wrap up with a closing line. Bye, Matthias. Have a good day. Uh, wrap up with a closing line. Now, this is also important. The way you begin and the way you finish are very, very important. Okay? So, when we are closing an email, we have to think uh, the, how we can do it the best possible way. Okay? Let's see about this. Your email should conclude with one sentence that makes your meaning clear and sets up whatever's next. Okay? So, once you already set your purpose, once you already mentioned what you really want to achieve, what do you want to obtain with this email, the, you should conclude with a sentence that makes it clear and sets up whatever is next. So what is what is our next step? What is coming later? What are we supposed to do later or after this? Okay? For example, here it says, I look forward to discussing this with you further at 11 a.m. Thursday. Right, this is a pretty good example because the person, after stating their purpose, said is asking to continue with the topic, but in a very in another using another another tool, which is the meeting, so they can they can continue to, uh, discussing the topic. Now he says, please look over the draft manuscript I'm attaching and let me know what revisions. Or questions come to mind so this is the next step this is the next step after stating the purpose this person is asking for the response and which is in this case the next step in the other one your guidance has been extremely helpful and I look look forward to being in touch 
in this case is closing a little bit what they talked about and they are uh, and they are uh, finishing sort of the meeting so they can discuss another topic because in this case they are finishing this one so we have three different ways to express one with the continuation but uh, with another tool with another aspect which is a meeting the other one is to ask for a response uh, where the other person has to tell what is going to happen what's what's our next step what is the next step in this in this work and the last one is when it's kind of closing this agreement uh, cl closing this issue and they can uh, talk about another another issue some other time but just let's trying to keep to stay in touch okay now we have now signed off with an appropriate closing what do we mean by this how to close our emails how to finish our emails this is a the part that we need to keep into account how do we uh, have to finish once we have our once we uh, already finished this thing when we have already stated our purpose we want to obtain what once we have the ideas that we need and it's time for closing for finishing what is the appropriate way to do it okay this is coming here here we have some phrases that you can include sincerely yours truly thanks again appreciatively best regards and respectfully and you put your name okay those are some expressions that could you that you could use in order to close your email those are some of the steps that we need to do in order to close those are some of the phrases you you could use and after uh, of course your name at the end to finish the email okay sincerely yours truly thanks again appreciative appreciatively best regards and respectfully now okay this is the last step in when we are typing our email however there is one more step that we need to keep into account which could be one of the most important okay one of the most important here take a moment to proof read yeah this is mandatory never skip this step no matter how hurried you are no matter if you're in a hurry it's okay you have to do so many other things but take a moment to proofread this could be a life saver okay so what do i mean by this imagine that you're typing a word wrong wrongly you write uh, the wrong word because sometimes we don't we don't we we were in a hurry we did it fast we didn't check we just send and we can make a mistake in the word and that word can have a negative meaning so it is better to take a moment check carefully it won't take that, that long so you better take a moment to prove it so you are so are sure that this email has contains the information you're you're actually looking for you really want you really intend to send for example make sure your greeting looks right okay nothing feels less nothing nothing feels worse than realizing the name of the person you just email was misspelled especially if they are not if they don't belong to your country they have they may have a different spelling they may have a different way to to write it so be very careful on that and then you say thanks when it's appropriate 
So you don't say thank you if you haven't received any favor or if you haven't received any kind of help. Be careful when to say help, thank you, and when not to do it. Okay? Double check that any request you are making is straightforward. I mean clear and easy to understand, but not abrupt or presumptuous. In this case, we are referring to uh, trying to be uh, very formal, but very clear, and not like pushing the person you're writing to. Okay? So, this is important to do, to take some more minutes before sending the email. I don't know if this has happened to you in your, in your native language, but it has, but it happens. Imagine in English, it could happen too. So the best way to do it is to take some moments to prepare, to read it again. Maybe you can, well, you know, everything we write can be better. Everything we do can be, can, can be improved. So if we check it out one more time, we can make it still better. Okay? So this is important before you, and the last step is to send it. So let's try to make a quick review, and then uh, you can ask if you have any questions. Okay? I will go again with this in a, in a faster way to make sure you are following the, we are following the steps, and we try to and we try to to check or to clarify any possible doubts you may have. Okay? Let's go, go back from the beginning. This is quite fast. Mm -hmm. The topic that is how to write emails, we already know that. As we said before, the subject line that has to be clear and has to be like the summary of what we are telling. We need to make sure that our subject line has to be, if you can help me, has to be catchy, simple, specific, and catchy. Okay, we need to use simple words in order to we need to make sure you use simple words so the person understands exactly what this is about. Okay. The second step is to greet the person you are running to in an appropriate way in an appropriate way. Okay? This is what we have to keep into account. We have to do it in an appropriate way. Once again, you have to say dear is the most appropriate when you don't when you know the name of the person, dear, which is universal for everybody. And be careful with the punctuation. I again mark this part of punctuation. You can use a comma when it's a, when you put only the name, you put a colon which is a little more formal. Okay? To make sure this this is clear, and when you don't know, when you don't know the name of the person, you can use to whom it may concern. To whom it may concern, yeah. So again, I repeat, the comma is when you say the name, the colon is when you say the full name. They also mentioned that the full name was the most appropriate way to say, right? Once again, about the girls, when we're talking about women and we don't know their marital status, if they're not worth, whether they're married, single, divorced, widower, we have to just put miss or the full name in order to make to avoid problems. Do not put sir or madam. Let's remember that. Do not write sir or madam. This is not appropriate. This could be a root, and this is not what we want. This is not our objective. Yeah. This in case. Okay. <clears throat> this I mentioned this in case you were thinking or you were you had a previous message with this person. Just in that case, in, if this isn't your case, don't say anything related to this. You go directly to your purpose, to the point you want to focus on. Okay. And, as, and if you are talking previously with this person and you want to check to say thank you for something, do it at the very beginning. Don't do it uh, after the conversation or at the end of the conversation. Do it at the beginning so you can start with the other part immediately and you don't have to get back to 
saying thank you for this, thank you for that, okay? And in order to avoid changing the subject. Here are some of the examples. You can use thank you, thanks, or you can explain that the situation requested has already been solved. Always at the beginning. Always at the very beginning of your email. Now, what you are writing about. Once you finish with the thank you part or explain the previous topic, you say uh, the purpose. What, did, what are you writing about? Why, what do you want to talk about? What is your point? And as I, as I said before, you have to state the purpose and how, how this person can be helpful for you or how this person can help you. Okay, once again, after the thank you, this is the purpose of my email, you are the person who can help me. That's it. But you know, these are the, the way to just, just to try to make trying to make it a little more yeah, more straightforward. Here are some examples I'm writing for this. In this case, this uh, versus are about research, looking to scale an interview, and kind of here saying that this is a, the right person for the post or right person to support with some help. Okay, the language you use, the most formal, the better. Okay, this is important that we have into account. Uh huh. Once again, we're talking about formality. It's preferable to exaggerate in being formal than to be rude. So, if you think you're being too formal, that's okay. Not a problem. Because you may want to sound a little less formal, and it could change to rude, not to not to not not to, not to the point you want, but it could create a problem. So the more formal in this case, as for being your first email, the better. Try to keep it formal so it will it won't cause you any problems. Something which is sometimes hard to keep it short again, I repeat this thing, keep it short. It may sound it may sound a repetitive, but keep it short. Don't say so many things. Okay? Don't say so many things which may cause a problem to you. Now, that's why they say keep it short, because you should be respectful of your reader's time. Why? Because the person must be busy and may not take enough time to read. Oh, if you, read too, if you write too much, this person won't, read, won't pay enough attention. You know, the, the, we know we, we have this time limitation. So it's important to be straight to the point, direct to the point, in a very respectful way, but always telling things clearly. Remember that the email is not to tell a complete situation, but just to state what is happening, how to how things can be solved, and when you can arrange something in order to solve that situation or to fix that situation, or uh, to have a further to have further discussion on such topics. Okay, you have you can set up a meeting or discussion, but you cannot have a discussion due in the email. Remember that. Well, okay. We already talked about it, but just in case, remember to keep it short. And in case you want to have more detail, more uh, more detailed information, you have to arrange something, but not through emails. Wrap up with a closing line. So you have to be sure about how you want to end this conversation. How do you want to end your email? What do you want to obtain from this? For example, you have to set the next point that is coming. What are you going to do after sending this email? What is the next step? What is coming next? Mm -hmm. So you're writing for this. You're stating your purpose. And what do you want to happen? That is the idea. What do you want to obtain with this email? After this person reads his email, what is going to happen? Okay. What is the next step? For example, as, as this, I really like this, these closures because they were pretty interesting. 
uh, I'll look forward to discussing this with you Friday at 11 a.m. Thursday. So in this case, they are setting up a meeting, which is a very nice way. Please look over the draft manuscript and I'm attaching and let me know what revisions or questions come to mind. In this case, they want a response that can be through the email. Through two different situations. And in this one, your guidance has been extremely helpful and I look forward to being in touch. What it's saying here is closing the closing uh, this this issue, this fact, and just let's try to keep in touch. Maybe there will be something Something will come up and I will need your services or we will need each other. So we did, we work well and we can continue working together uh, later. Three different ways of closing. Two to, continue, two to continue and one to finish what they, what about the job, but to keep the contact, which is important. Always keeping contacts is important. Finally, we're signing off with an appropriate closing. We're saying goodbye using sincerely, yours truly, thanks again, appreciably, best regards, or respectfully. And you include your name. Okay? You include your name. And as I said before, this is key in this kind of aspects. Take a moment to proofread. Take a moment to read what you're going to do it to do to check spelling to check uh, if the purpose is correctly written if it's well described if you can improve it there's always room for improvement so we, you can do it better better and better okay every time we have the chance to do things better so take a moment and you will feel good imagine you're thinking why didn't I check it why didn't I do this before you will feel like it, 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 it wasn't enough, so you better do it once more and, and things will work well. Make sure your green looks right, for example. Check the spelling of the name of the person. Uh, say thanks when it's appropriate. That's what I mentioned before. When it's appropriate, not necessarily all the time. And double check that any request you're making is straightforward and easy to understand but not too abrupt and presumptuous, presumptuous, okay? Try to make it formal, try to make it polite so the person doesn't feel overwhelmed or doesn't feel that you're being rude or that you're trying to obtain something at any cost, okay? So, uh, to finish, uh, thank you very much. I don't know if you have any questions that you would like to ask, uh, if there's something that uh, needs to be deepened. I don't know, please, I am I'm, uh, would be glad to read your questions to see if there's something you want to include or something you want to request. I don't know, please, um, feel free to ask. I'm here to, to help you. No, thank you guys, but uh, I don't know if it, if it was clear, if you, if, if, if it's, if it's, uh, if there's something you want to add, something you would like to, to tell, you would like to. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Uh, I really appreciate your comments, uh, but and there's nothing else you'd like to say. We still have some minutes, and I I try to leave this time for you to 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 ask your questions or to to review something that that I may have said uh, not correctly or that it's uh, I don't know. All your comments are welcome, so be free, feel free to ask or to say something you, you need me to, to repeat or, or something.
Would you like to say something, guys? Would you like to add something? Would you like me to repeat something or to 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 give more details about something else? Well, some 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 uh, I don't know. You have heard about uh, there's a, a new a new tool. You're welcome. You're welcome, guys. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, there's a tool which is called uh, Grammarly. I don't know if you have heard about it. It appears on the internet, sometimes on TV, I think, too. And it's a very good tool because, and it's for free. You can you can check it out on the internet. And um, it is very helpful. It checks your content. It underlines the things that need to be improved. It It checks your... So whenever you want to send your emails, it can help you with your grammar. It can help you with your vocabulary if you're using the appropriate vocabulary. So the word I'm just going to write it here for you to have it. The word is the the, the tool is called Grammarly. Okay, the tool is Grammarly. You can watch it. You can check it out on the internet. It's a very very helpful tool. You you won't regret it because it's going to help you improve your writing and it, it will improve your grammar even native speakers use them use it because you know sometimes they don't they make mistakes as everybody so it is a a very very helpful gra grammar tool for people who want to 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 write appropriately their emails you know so the thing is if you want to use it you, it's for free so it's going to very help be very helpful for you in the future, when you're when you're uh, in your writing, hmm? oh, you're welcome. No, as I told you, it's pretty helpful. I use it sometimes because I have to write emails to to American people because who I or British people who I contact sometimes, and uh, it helps you when you're especially when you're in a hurry, <laughs> and you sometimes don't, don't don't have the time to proofread. Sometimes you misspell something, and this tool helps you very much. A lot, a lot, a lot. So uh, I gave you the name there, there, so you can check it out. You can work with it, and you can like uh, have, you can uh, learn new things too, because it will will be uh, it will be a great asset for you. Wow, sometimes I, uh, I'm sorry, but I, sometimes I, I can't believe that it's all clear. But uh, thank you very much for for your attention. Thank you very much for for everything. Uh, well, uh, I don't know what else to say to you because I, I I was hoping to have more questions, but that's okay. If it if it's if it's okay, I I feel really really glad that you are that you understood everything. If you have any any comments or any you know any suggestions for me uh, to make it a little more you know a little less heavy, a little you know. Whatever comment you think it's appropriate, please let me know, and I will try to to make the webinar more enjoyable for you, which is the purpose. You know, the thing is that I want you to feel okay. I would like you to feel good in this in this webinar, so I try to make it as dynamic as possible. You know, with the problems you may have here, because sometimes I speak too fast, maybe. So if it's not, I will try to, to continue improving with this. The idea is that you feel good and, and you feel that this is clear for you and you have no issues, no problems with with uh, with these courses. Okay, this is the idea, this is the purpose. Mm -hmm. This is the idea, this is the purpose to to be good for you. So, so you have no problems in the end, so you feel that this is worthwhile, that the seminars are helping you, and that you are improving, which is the, the idea. I want, I want you to feel good, you feel confident. Okay. Uh, well, I think uh, if you have any other comments, feel free to ask, feel free to write them. 
Otherwise, we will be closing the webinar right now, or in the moment. Oh, that's that's so good, Matthew. Really, really, that makes me feel very good. <laughs> you can't imagine how. <laughs> very, very, thank you very much for your comments. I, I'm really glad that this is helping you. That is my purpose, and I try to make it as, uh, you know, try to make it as simple to teach. But uh, very uh, unmanageable for you, so uh, I hope you can do it. You can continue with this, and you can continue improving because I know you're you will. Okay, uh, you know. Uh, should you have any more comments, feel free to ask. Feel free to write. Feel free to say whatever you need. That he we will try to improve in order to to do something better for you. Okay. Thank you very much again, guys. Uh, remember to use Grammarly, and because it will help you with your with your grammar, with your with your vocabulary, and with your contents. Okay. So I think that's pretty much it. Uh, if you have no more questions, thank you, thank you, Gavna, thank you, everybody. Good night for now. We're saying goodbye for for the moment. Okay. Hope you have a great time. Thank you, and we'll, I hope to see you or to, to to be in touch with you in our next webinar. Have a good have a good night. Okay. Bye for now.